Hey friends, Ash here with Gents Sense coming at you guys with a fragrance review today. The fragrance we're going to be taking a look at is this one. The newest fragrance in the 1 million line, 1 million parfum, of course, by Paco Rabanne. In this video, I'll show you guys the presentation for this fragrance, give you a breakdown on how this fragrance smells, let you know how it changes from the opening to the mid to the dry down, and also give you my opinion on the fragrance, whether I think this is a really good release or maybe not so great or even kind of bad. I did a first impression on this fragrance as well. I've been giving it a bunch of wear since that video. And when I did that first impression, it wasn't readily available in the US yet. So if you wanted this one, you had to find somewhere in Europe that would ship to the US and then you would get hit with heavy shipping costs. If you could even find a place that would ship to the US, a lot of places based in Europe won't. But now, as of this video, this one is readily available in the US, both online and in stores, though it's not at discounters yet. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's jump into this and check out One Million Parfum. First off, a look at the presentation. You get the name of the fragrance, name of the house, size and concentration down here at the bottom. You'll notice this on the bottle as well, but it has this almost kind of sun flare design coming out from behind the one. On the top of the box, you have the PR for Paco Rabanne. Nothing on the sides. On the back, you have your ingredient information. And on the bottom, you will find your batch code here. And here is a look at the bottle. Again, same design as from the box. On the atomizer, you have one million. And as you can see there, it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. You can see through the bottle pretty easily. I'm not sure if that comes across on camera or not. There is the bottom of the bottle. Your badge code is actually down here. And I'll go ahead and waste a spray for you guys as well. Pretty much the same as with any one million bottle. And the badge code on this one is 00161. Okay, one million parfum. When this was first announced, before I read about any of the notes or the idea behind the fragrance or anything like that, first thing that came to my mind was fragrances like Aqua de Zoe Profumo or Code Profumo. Fragrances that take an existing DNA, but then either darken it up or make it richer or sweeter, uh, make it more powerful. Basically take an existing fragrance's DNA and then switch it up a little bit and make it even more suited for fall and winter. That's what comes to my mind anyway when I hear Parfum, Profumo, or any of the other styles of just saying Parfum, making a Parfum flanker. This one is very different. This one, to me, does not really smell like One Million, or honestly, any of the fragrances in the One Million line. And on top of that, it does not smell like a wintertime or fall time, cool weather, cold weather type of fragrance. Also, not a nighttime type of fragrance. So it is a big departure from what I typically think of when I hear a flanker is coming out and it's named Parfum. I guess not a huge surprise when you look at the little design with that sort of ray of sunshine effect coming out from behind the one, but overall, a surprise. And I'll read for you guys just really quickly some of the ideas behind this fragrance from Paco Rabanne. Not gonna take long, so stick with me here. They say that it is a sun-drenched leather with salty effects a warm, deliberate scent on the edge of the extreme. There's a solar leather accord paired with notes of resin and pine, and then a tuberose salty sort of vibe going on with amber woods, again, according to the brand. So to me, how does one million parfum smell? How does it come across? Initially, it has a little bit of a suntan lotion vibe, not to the extreme that some other fragrances may have where it's just straight up suntan lotion, but there is a suntan lotion kind of nuance to the fragrance. It's most prominent in the opening. Once you hit the mid, it kind of fades away, but I can pick it up very easily when I first spray this on. There are also heavy solar notes in the opening of the fragrance, a bit of salt and white florals. Now, as this one heads through the mid, it becomes almost a sugary sweet white floral fragrance. It's quite heavy 
on the sweetness to me. Not at all in the same way as the original One Million, which was spicy sweetness, a little darker, a little richer. This one is just really sweet white florals with kind of a clean musk backing. The solar notes are still there in the mid. The suntan lotion kind of vibe, as I mentioned, that fades off as you go through the mid of the fragrance. Musk is not an official note here though. As I mentioned, I picked that up and that actually lasts through into the dry down. And then there's also ambergris as an official note, but the ambergris here is actually going to come across as mentioned by Paco Rabanne, more like amber wood. Into the dry down, it's going to be mainly a warm, fuzzy, clean sort of scent with hints of residual sweetness from the mid and the opening. There's a bit of cashmere in the dry down, which is going to help with that fuzzy sort of warmth. And this fragrance to me is 100% unisex, even though it's marketed toward men. And it actually leans a bit more on the feminine side of things than it does the masculine side. And it's not just me that feels that way. I've worn this multiple times around my wife, I've had her smell it each time. I've not told her that it's the same fragrance, though of course she picked up on that as time went. I just said, hey, how does this smell to you? Pick up any notes? Does it smell good? Is it appealing to you? Do you like it? Does it smell masculine? Just let me know all your thoughts. And she would say it's really sweet, it's really heavy on florals, and it smells feminine and that was every single time. And if you break this fragrance down really simplistically, that's what this is. It's got a lot of white flowers, very sweet, as I mentioned, kind of sugary sweet, and it's feminine. So for guys out there that are looking for the next club fragrance, the next big compliment puller, the loud, sweet, spicy sort of scent that One Million is, the original One Million, that's not what you're gonna find in here. So that's both a positive and a negative thing. At least Paco Rabanne did not take the existing DNA of One Million, make a couple of small tweaks, and release a fragrance that's 85% or 90% similar to the original One Million, and say, hey, it's the new Parfum. It's like One Million, but a little more intense. So they get points for doing something completely different. Uh, the problem is, I don't really like this. Now, if you look on Fragrantica, it's got a good amount of love. The love bar on this fragrance is higher than the like and higher than the dislike, though the dislike bar is higher than the like bar. So it's kind of divisive, it looks like, and I get why. For me, this is not a fragrance that I personally want to smell like. I don't smell this and go like, oh, it's a synthetic mess. It smells like trash. It smells like just a, a complete mix up of things that don't work. That's not how it is to me. It's just not a fragrance that I want to wear. When I smell this, again, it comes across very feminine, sugary, sweet, heavy, heavy on that sweetness through the mid and uh, lots of florals. And I just don't really like the way that they're used in this scent, again, for me personally. In spring or summertime, it's just not something that I want to smell like. Now, let's talk about performance. It's actually really, really good. One million parfum, eight plus hours of longevity off my skin, closer to 10 plus hours, really. It lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts. And that is different than most spring and summertime fragrances out there, because typically those fresher fragrances are gonna have a little bit of a lower longevity and projection. And the projection here, very good as well. First couple hours, this one projects quite heavily. Once it hits the dry down, it starts to sit a bit closer to the skin, but it takes a long time before it becomes a complete skin scent off my skin. So that, the performance, is gonna be a positive for a lot of you out there. For me though, One Million Parfum, it's kind of a confusing release. It's almost like Paco Rabanne had this fragrance and then they were not sure exactly of how they should release it. So they said, well, let's just do another one million flanker and we'll put it in that line. It's almost like they took this fragrance and shoehorned it into a line where it doesn't really fit. And some of you may disagree with me and you may say, oh, it's doing something new and I like that kind of sunscreen vibe that it has. It's very much a daytime beach sort of scent and some people may really dig that. But for me, it just seems out of place and I'm not a huge fan, again, of wearing this one personally. And as far as uses go, as I just mentioned, this is going to be a daytime scent, a casual scent. It does come across a little more youthful because there is that sweetness in here and it's not done in a way that you might call sophisticated. <laughs> so it's going to be more youthful, daytime, casual spring and summertime fragrance for me. Not a fragrance that I would want to wear to the office either. So for me, just strictly casual kind of situations. And one last thing before I wrap this up, the leather in this fragrance, 
Forgot to mention that as I was breaking down kind of how it smells. You can pick up some leather in One Million Parfum as it heads from the opening into the mid, but it's never really all that prominent for me. It's never in the forefront of the fragrance. This one never becomes a leather fragrance first with other backing notes or anything like that. It's never on equal footing with the white floral notes. And for a lot of people out there, I think they might just miss the leather note entirely. You kind of have to smell and then think about it, and then you can pick it up kind of laying a base for all of those white florals to sit on top of, but it's never, never all that prominent. So I know that they present this as a solar leather fragrance with pine and resins mixing in with that leather, but that never really comes to fruition off my skin. I pick up a little bit of leather. Do I pick up labdanum or any other resins? Not too much. The white florals are more, again, as I've said a number of times, to me, kind of a sugary sweetness. It's not really like this rich, resinous, deep, balsamic kind of sweetness. That doesn't happen. Pine, I don't really pick that up either. I know the pine is listed. I know Paco Rabanne mentions it, but I don't really get a whole lot of it. As I've said a number of times, I get, as I've mentioned a number of times, I get that kind of musky, clean backing, the cashmere, the ambergris, I get that. I get a lot of white florals. I get sweetness in the opening. I get the Manoy oil, which is going to be that sunscreen, suntan lotion kind of vibe, and a little tiny touch of leather. That's about it. So for me, one million parfum, nah, I don't really like it. For some people out there, it could work. Uh, for ladies out there who are maybe a little adventurous, it could work for you as well. I think if you're interested in this one, still check it out, even though I don't like it. Maybe you will. And where this is a Paco Rabanne 1 million release, it's gonna be everywhere. So if you go into a store that has fragrances, they should have this. And then you can check it out for yourself. And if you like it, scoop it up. For me though, definitely not one to buy at retail. And as far as the 1 million line goes, off the top of my head, my least favorite in the 1 million line. There we go. If you've smelled 1 million parfum, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. As always, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe out there. See you guys tomorrow.